joints. In uh, computer animation, the uh, motion of characters is uh, similar to uh, positioning uh, puppets in that uh, they are articulated figures with uh, movable joints and so just uh, posing the characters uh, frame by frame uh, gives you the uh, motion of the uh, of the character uh, specifying each of the uh, limbs like the arms the legs uh, parts like the hands of course we are very familiar with um, joints in the human body and how they are rotated by the contraction of the muscles so joints like the elbow or the ankle and so forth now um, in uh, animals virtually all the joints are revolute joints which means it's a joint which uh, produces a rotation uh, in uh, robots there's another type of joint which is common uh, called the prismatic joint where uh, something extends or contracts in length now uh, revolute joints there's a variety of uh, these sorts of joints depending on the axis of rotation so you could have something like the uh, forearm which is a pivot joint uh, the elbow which is a hinge or something um, with a variable axis such as the ball and socket joint uh, in the shoulder now uh, the uh, joints in uh, mammals tend to be uh, rather uh, similar <clears throat> so here we see the um, <clears throat> bone structure for uh, horse human dog cat cow and uh, this is for the front leg or the for the arm for the human the we have a shoulder joint uh, elbow joint similar uh, wrist joint uh, but what you should keep in mind here is that the different bones are significantly uh, different lengths so uh, for example uh, for the dog in the front legs uh, this uh, joint uh, way up near the body of the dog is actually the elbow um, so uh, and then in the back legs uh, this joint which is roughly in the in the middle of the leg is actually the ankle so although we would expect the knee to be at that uh, position in the middle of the leg uh, it's actually the elbow which I'm sorry, it's actually the ankle back there, which is why the um, rotation of this uh, joint is opposite from the direction of the rotation for a human uh, knee. Now, uh, Chuck Jones presents a, a nice way of remembering uh, these different uh, anatomical forms for animals, which is uh, the sole uh, ankle knee uh, just dressing the animal in uh, tennis shoes and uh, striped socks so uh, here we have the what uh, tennis shoe and striped socks with the uh, top of the sock at the knee and the top of the tennis shoe at the uh, ankle uh, so for a dog uh, the tennis shoe would stretch all the way up uh, half half up the leg and the uh, top of the sock would be actually close to the body and even more extreme uh, with the uh, with the horse anyway it's a wonderful book so uh, I do suggest you uh, check that out and uh, that was just for um, mammals but in fact uh, all vertebrates uh, have uh, fairly similar uh, joints, muscles, and uh, bones. Here we have um, a chicken wing, and you see the wrist and the forearm and the elbow, so forth. Now, in animation, in order to uh, position the limbs in a joint, uh, sorry, uh, in a pose, so positioning the uh, joint uh, and 
specifying the various angles for the for the joints in order to establish a pose. Uh, one way of doing this is with uh, forward kinematics, and in this case, uh, the animator would uh, determine the angle of rotation for each joint. So uh, you would presumably start with the uh, shoulder, uh, rotate that to the desired angle, then uh, rotate the elbow, and then finally the um, establish the angle of the wrist. Now this uh, use of uh, forward kinematics can be uh, somewhat uh, tedious for the animator and especially difficult in some situations where, uh, for example, you need to maintain a uh, stationary uh, part of the uh, joints. Uh, one ex a common example is if you have a character that is walking, uh, establishing the angles for the different um, joints, say the hip and the knee, uh, fixing those frame by frame while maintaining uh, a planted foot so that the, uh, in other words, the foot uh, doesn't slide in an unnatural fashion is rather difficult with um, uh, forward kinematics. Uh, for this reason, uh, sometimes the motion is specified using inverse kinematics. So um, in this case, uh, the animator would uh, control the position of a so-called end effector. Uh, the end effector might be the hand, so uh, the animator would position the hand and then the computer would calculate the uh, angles for the elbow and the shoulder. Now, um, this inverse kinematics isn't uh, foolproof uh, in that uh, the rotations that are calculated may not be uh, natural poses. Uh, you may lift the hand up to do a high five and some of the intermediate positions um, may look uh, awkward and, and unnatural. And furthermore, the, uh, the timing of the motion from the uh, starting position to the end position may not uh, may not be correct. So in uh, summary, in computer graphics, characters are posed and animated by rotating the joints. Vertebrates have uh, similar revolute joints that are either pivot joints, hinge joints, or ball and socket joints. In forward kinematics, a figure is posed by setting the uh, joint angles. Whereas with inverse kinematics, uh, the computer calculates the joint angles based on the position of an end effector, uh, such as the hand or foot, and so the animator controls um, the positioning of the end effector, and the joint angles are uh, determined um, from a uh, computer calculation. Now, uh, this is just an introduction to the types of rotations which are involved in character animation and in uh, some of the other tutorials we'll get more into the physics of what's involved uh, when something is rotating, specifically the types of forces which create a rotation, which would be a torque, and how um, the law of acceleration applies to uh, rotation. So, see you then.